forged long ago, the armor of the Adeptus Astartes stands as one of the most terrifying sights for the enemies of the Imperium. Clad in these hulking suits of power armor, the Space Marines stride across battlefields like demigods, shrugging off blows that would pulverize lesser beings and unleashing a righteous fury on anything foolish enough to stand in their way. But how does it work? What tech and gadgets are packed into these towering suits of death-dealing justice? Well, luckily for you, on a recent lore tour's flight through the most grimdark of universes, one of our more adventurous and some might say foolish captains decided to take a detour to an Adeptus Astartes fortress monastery, and somehow he managed to make it away with an intact set of Space Marine armor, ready for our lore tour's R&D team to break down and analyze for you today. Now over the long and storied history of the Imperium, there have been many variations of Space Marine armor, but they all follow broadly the same layout. Before we dive into any specifics, it's worth noting that the armor isn't just a suit, it's a symbiotic partner to the Space Marine wearing it. You see, these superhuman warriors are fitted with a whole host of augmentations and gene seed implants, and the armor works in perfect tandem with them to create one of the deadliest forces in the known universe. Let's start with what this beast is made of. The armor is constructed from shaped adamantium and plasteel plates, all encased in a ceramite ablative layer. Adamantium is one of the strongest metals known to the Imperium, near invulnerable to attacks from most conventional weapons. Plasteel, on the other hand, is a synthetic material with the consistency of plastic, but the strength of steel. It's lightweight yet incredibly durable, providing the perfect balance of protection and mobility. Then there's ceramite, which is the armor's outermost layer. This shock-resistant ceramic material is capable of absorbing and dissipating extreme thermal and direct energy attacks, which is just a fancy way of saying it can take a plasma blast to the chest and keep on ticking. It's also great at dispersing electromagnetic radiation, providing protection against direct energy and particle-based weaponry, like those pesky Tau pulse rifles. Now let's talk about the helmet. It's essentially a tactical command center wrapped around a Space Marine's head. The helmet is packed with integrated tactical targeting and threat analysis systems, which are more commonly known as auto sensors. These include everything from targeting reticules and rangefinders to target recognition friend or foe systems. The helmet also features a fort activated communication system and audio filters. Visuals are displayed over the suit's eyepieces and audio is piped through transceivers in the suit's collar. But it doesn't stop there. The helmet's auger scanner can detect and analyze motion, gases, heat, radiation, plasma, and electromagnetic energy given off by vehicles and living beings, ensuring that nothing can sneak up on a space marine. The helmet's photo lenses are reinforced eye guards that protect the space marine from dazzling bright lights. These lenses allow the wearer to see into the infrared and ultraviolet ranges, enable vision in low light conditions, and provide visual magnification of up to four times. And the respirator Vox grill can amplify a Space Marine's battle cries to deafening volumes, ideal for rallying the troops or simply scaring the living daylights out of the enemy. It also contains a respirator to filter out toxins, and if things get really nasty, the Marine can close the grill with a fort and draw on the suit's internal oxygen supply. Now some Space Marines do choose to go helmetless, maybe they want to intimidate their enemies, or maybe it's to inspire their comrades around them. But should a Space Marine decide to forego the helmet, they would not lose out on all of the benefits of the helmet's auto sensors, as Astartes would often use earpieces and ocular enhancement devices to regain their tactical and targeting analysis systems. Moving on to the upper body of the armor, we need to talk about the Black Carapace. This is the most crucial of the 19 gene seed organs that a Space Marine neophyte receives upon transcending into full Astartes status. The Black Carapace is a neuroreactive black organic fibrous material implanted directly under the skin of the initiate's torso. This material interfaces with the Space Marine's central nervous system, allowing them to connect seamlessly with the power armor's cybernetic system. So instead of just wearing a suit, the Space Marine becomes the suit. The Black Carapace meshes the man and machine, 
Into one formidable unit, this symbiosis allows the Space Marine to control the armor as effortlessly as you or I would move an arm or a leg, only you know with a lot more firepower and the ability to crush enemies in a single blow. The chest plate, or the plastron as it's officially known, is another crucial piece of this deadly puzzle. It's designed to protect not just the Space Marine's vital organs, but also the suit's armored power cables the very lifelines that keep all this advanced tech running smoothly. And then we have the shoulder pauldrons. These massive intimidating shoulder guards are shaped to deflect and absorb incoming blows, keeping the wearer safe from everything from shrapnel to direct missile strikes. But of course they serve another purpose as well. The pauldrons are prime real estate for displaying the Adeptus Astartes identification markings, such as chapter symbols, company and squad designations. Moving on down to the arms, there's even more tech to discover. For instance, a cogitator, a kind of digital computer, is situated on the wrist. This little device performs a variety of functions, from optimizing the suit's internal conditions based on the environment, to more complex tasks like battlefield calculations. Then there's the gauntlets. The palms of these armored gloves are fitted with sensors that can read information from any weapon held by the Space Marine, and its sensors pass genetic identification codes directly to the weapon, ensuring that only the rightful Astartes can use it. Around the lower back of the armor we have the liquid high-protein food store and nutrient reservoir. This self-replenishing high-energy liquid sustains the Space Marine's genetically enhanced metabolism without the need for further nourishment, while the armor's life support functions also include an automated Medikai system. This system is equipped with everything from pain suppressors to combat stimulants and anti-venoms, all ready to be deployed at a moment's notice if the wearer sustains damage. These advanced systems monitor the Astartes biological functions, feeding this collected medical information back to the wearer and, if necessary, to the chapter's apothecaries. Connected to the back of the armor we'll find the incredibly large and bulky backpack which provides a number of crucial functions that are vital to the survival and effectiveness of a space marine. First, let's touch on the fact that the power armor itself is fully sealed, isolating the wearer from the outside environment. This means that, once suited up, a space marine is completely protected from any chemical or biological weapons, as well as toxic atmospheres and even the vacuum of space. The backpack plays a key role in this by containing the suit's onboard oxygen supply and air purification system. This system allows the wearer to breathe in the most hostile of environments, whether it's a gas-choked battlefield or the frigid emptiness of space. But that's just the beginning, the backpack also houses the suit's main power source, a subatomic microfusion generator, and just in case the main generator needs a little backup, the backpack also includes a solar power converter and 100 solar cell batteries to store the absorbed solar energy. Temperature regulation is another critical function provided by the backpack. In cold environments, heat is generated by the power core to keep the Space Marine warm, and any thermal buildup within the suit can be vented via the backpack's distinctive nozzles. And there's more, because of course there's more, this suit seemingly has everything. The backpack is also equipped with minor thrust and movement stabilizers, which are particularly useful in low or zero gravity combat. Now moving on down to the legs, we start to see how, despite wearing such a heavy and cumbersome suit of armor, Space Marines can move about with an almost unnatural ease. This is thanks to the electrically motivated fiber bundles within the armor that replicate the wearer's movements and enhance their strength beyond even their already considerable superhuman baseline. These muscle fiber bundles and actuators are what allow a Space Marine to lift heavier loads, jump greater distances, and generally perform feats of strength that would be impossible for anyone else, even other unarmored Space Marines to accomplish. The leg armor also features gyroscopic stabilizers that help maintain balance and prevent the Space Marine from being knocked off their feet. And for those times when the battle takes place in zero gravity, the soles of the boots are magnetized, ensuring that the Space Marine stays firmly planted no matter the environment. But if you're thinking about donning your own set of Space Marine power armor, well, let me stop you right there. It's not as simple as just clambering on into the armor. 
though this is going to be a bit of a hassle and that's putting it lightly. First off you'll need to undergo the horrifying and gruelling augmentation process to transform yourself into a physically enhanced super soldier, but let's assume you survived that ordeal and are now a proud member of the Adeptus Astartes. Even after becoming a space marine you'll need to partake in a time consuming and laborious ritual just to adorn yourself with your new armour. Because you see, this isn't merely a battle suit, it's a relic, a sacred artifact, and it's revered as such. Each suit of power armour can take many decades to forge, and they're not just slapped together on an assembly line. No, these suits are crafted with meticulous care, and each one is maintained by skilled chapter serfs with absolute devotion, but when it's time to don your armour, the process is anything but quick. The chapter serfs who have spent their lives caring for these sacred relics will carefully place each piece of the armour over your black body glove. This is done as part of an elaborate ritual where the emperor is venerated and the goodwill of the armour's machine spirit is sought. So with all this in mind, it's easy to see why space marine armour is as feared as it is. It's not just a suit, it's a fully integrated, self-sustaining battle system that turns a space marine into an unstoppable force of destruction, one capable of fighting anywhere, under any conditions, and coming out on top almost every time. Which armour is your favourite? Is there anything you'd like to add to the armour to improve it? Make sure to let us know down in the comments and subscribe to join us again soon. Until then, catch you next time.